live from WYLN Hazleton, this is WYLN's Late Edition News at 10 with meteorologist Joe Garbachik, sports with Beth Mensinger, anchors Lisa Sugar and L.A. Tyrone. News, weather, sports, features, and more. You're watching WYLN's Late Edition News at 10. Good evening and welcome to WYLN's Late Edition for Wednesday, May 15th, 2013. I'm Lisa Sugart. Tonight, WYLN takes you inside a drill at one area high school. While the incident was not real, organizers hope it prevents the real thing from ever happening. And a special tribute at Hazleton City Hall to honor those who protect and serve. And Galley has that story. In sports, Beth Mensinger has highlights from tonight's Penguins game at the arena. And meteorologist Joe Garbacek has a forecast that is sure to please. But first, Late Edition's look at tonight's top stories. A senior at Crestwood Area High School has been charged with making threats towards the school. Late Edition's Ann Gownley reports. Students in the Crestwood Area High School reported three separate incidences where threats were seen written on the walls in the boys' bathroom. April 18th, bomb in the school. May 8th, bomb in school. May 9th, ricin is in the school. Each time it was found, the school was evacuated and searched by multiple agencies. Bomb-sniffing dogs were brought in, fire departments, ambulances, and members of the Luzerne County Emergency Management Agency. There was no evidence of bombs or ricin during any of those searches. With the help of the district, police were able to identify the student who committed these acts as 18-year-old Richard Sewell of Mountaintop, a senior at Crestwood Area High School. Investigators used writing samples to find similarities between Sewell's handwriting and the writing in the bathroom. The um, school resource officer was a major uh, help in this investigation. Having that, that officer in the school uh, provided us uh, much um, needed help. And it also, um, we were fortunate to also have a lot of assistance from the students, from the faculty. We are in the school. We, when we get a complaint, we investigate it very thoroughly. And today we, this is a, uh, Right a, a step in the right direction. This is what happens. Mm -hmm. Sewell was arraigned this morning at District Magistrate Ronald Swanks in Mountaintop. It's all just bullshit by the school. They're just trying to get me because they hate You didn't do what they're saying to No, of course not. You didn't put anything on the back of the bathroom stalls saying it was a bombing school? No, it's not, my, it's not my kind of thing. Sewell is charged with one count each of threatening to set weapons of mass destruction, criminal mischief, terroristic threats, causing false alarms to agencies of public safety, false reports, intimidation of witnesses or victims, and one count of institutional vandalism. These are serious matters. What we've um, gone through, our nation has gone through, um, threats like this will be taken seriously and um, we will dedicate all of our resources in trying to solve um, the matter, the case, and to see some type of resolution. Our main concern is the safety of our communities and that's, as you all heard, that was our legitimate concern in the arraignment today and um, we will proceed with caution and we will uh, make sure that our communities are safe and law enforcement does everything to continue to keep our, our streets and our neighborhoods safe. Chief Angler stresses the seriousness of a crime like this and what it could mean if you commit these acts. Think twice. It, this, is, this could be you here. If you, if you do this kind of type of thing, law enforcement will find you. Uh, the, the school districts will not tolerate this, this behavior. Sewell was released after posting a $25,000 straight cash bail and is not allowed on school grounds or contact with any of the students who were involved in this case. In Mountaintop for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Ann Gownley. Thanks, Ann. Also in the Crestwood Area School District, officials and police are investigating what they're calling a drug selling and trading ring. Patrolman Dave Winsock is investigating for Wright Township Police. We have uh, three suspects. Uh, they all are over the age of 18, seniors at the high school. Uh, and is concerned in investigation interviews. They are cooperating. The Crestwood School District is a 100% supportive and behind us on this. While there are three definite suspects, Winsock says others may be involved, which is why it's not as simple as just picking someone up. Due to the amount of people that may be involved or may not be involved, uh, the amount of interviews, uh, just time constraints, uh, and want to make sure we have all the facts before we make any arrests. 
At this time, it's uh, prescription drugs that we're aware of. Uh, you know, and there may be some possible other drugs, but uh, due to the ongoing investigation, uh, it's prescription drugs. He says one way to prevent this from happening is for people to watch what is inside their medicine cabinets as many who sell and use the drugs steal them from their own families. A report of a suspicious person led to a drug arrest in Berwick. Berwick police responded to the 400 block of South Arch Street Monday for a report of a suspicious person and vehicle. Officers were told the person placed items in a large black duffel bag, then headed to a wooded area. The vehicle was registered to Joshua Morgan, 1200 Susquehanna Boulevard, located about a block away. Now, according to police, Kressler and his wife, Christine Morgan, are both known to manufacture and use methamphetamine. Officers arrived at Kessler's home where, after receiving consent to search the residence by Morgan, they found Kessler under a piece of plywood flooring that did not match the rest of the floor. Now, police said that Kessler discarded a small white container as he exited the crawl space and briefly resisted arrest. Police found three clear bags of suspected methamphetamine and other drug-related items. A field test showed it to be meth. Kessler was charged with possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance, possession of a controlled substance, possession of drug paraphernalia, and resisting arrest. A drug bust in South Wilkesbury last night. A federal search warrant was used to search an apartment on New Alexander Street near Cary Avenue. Investigators said it was a heroin distribution point. Agents said they confiscated what they termed a large quantity of heroin. One person was taken into custody in Wilkesbury. Luzerne County Manager Bob Lawton has nominated someone else as Director of Judicial Records and Services. Joan Hogarth of Hanover Township has been acting in that position. Lawton originally nominated Linda Coxon of Frisco, Colorado, but County Council voted it down last night on a 5-5 to -5 tie. Councilman Harry Hawes abstained. Rick Morelli, Jim Bobeck, Elaine Madden-Curry, Linda mccloskey Hauk, and Rick Williams voted for her. Both Steve Urbans, Gene Kelleher, Ed Berminski, and Chairman Tim McGinley voted against. The troubled Sherman Hills Apartments in Wilkesbury has managed to get around rental inspections. Management violated city ordinance by failing to notify inspectors when new tenants moved in. Now, according to letters sent to Sherman Hills last November and December, the Citizens Voice obtained those notices with a right to know request. The complex went without an inspection for more than two years. Wilkesbury requires a new inspection each time a new tenant moves into an apartment. Sherman Hills has been the scene of a fairly lengthy list of incidents, including several shootings. A Wilkesbury man has been charged by a federal grand jury for his alleged involvement in two jewelry store robberies and a bank robbery, along with an insurance fraud scheme. According to U.S. Attorney Peter J. Smith, 45-year-old Kirk Robinson of Wilkesbury allegedly conspired with others to carry firearms in connection with the robbery of Steve Heidock Diamond's jewelry store in Kingston on May 5th of 2008 and Danae Jewelers store in Wilkesbury on May 14th of 2008. Robinson's also charged with involvement in an armed robbery of the M&T Bank in Hanover Township on October 30th of 2010. The indictment alleges that he acted as a planner and getaway driver in the robberies. Additionally, the grand jury charged him with a mail fraud scheme involving a fake jewelry robbery staged to fraudulently obtain $43,000 from an insurance company in 2009. The case was investigated by the FBI, the Kingston, Hanover Township and Wilkes-Barre Police Departments. Former Holy Redeemer football coach Joseph Ostrowski was sentenced to 25 years in prison on so-called sexploitation charges. Prosecutors say he preyed on 60-plus victims across the country, convincing them to perform sex acts he viewed on video. He also convinced some victims, including minor boys, to send nude photos of themselves, then threatened to share them with others if they did not send additional ones. He pleaded guilty in December to cyber-stalking, attempted production of child pornography, and interstate extortion related to separate cases in Michigan and Pennsylvania. He also faces charges of indecent assault and related, related offenses in Luzerne County for allegedly molesting a 13-year-old boy in a locker room. Education Secretary Ron Tamales is out. His resignation takes effect May 31st. Tamales has been named to the newly created post of Special Advisor to the Governor on Higher Education. Corbett will replace Tamales with William Harner, Superintendent of the Cumberland Valley School District. 
In his new job, Tomales will be responsible for overseeing and implementing recommendations from the governor's post-secondary advisory commission. Starting June 1st, Harner will become acting secretary under his nomination until his nomination is confirmed by the Senate. He will be paid the same as Tomales, $149,000 a year. LCTA says blame bus drivers for varied ridership figures. An internal investigation found some drivers were improperly overcounting senior citizen passengers and inflating passenger counts. Executive Director Stanley Strellis said the problem was drivers not knowing exactly how to count passengers. Some, he said, were counting the same passengers getting on and off buses. The allegation about ghost ridership came to light last fall. Senior citizen ridership numbers nosedived by 50% or more shortly thereafter. The Commonwealth Medical College officially opened its third location today. On the count of three, one, two, three. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. The ribbon was officially cut on the South Campus Regional Office at Wilkes-Barre General Hospital. Today is a celebration of the opening of our Southern Campus facility. It's brand new. Uh, we've worked very hard to uh, bring this campus to the hub of healthcare, which is uh, Wilkes-Barre General Hospital. Uh, this is where our students do most of their learning, and uh, the convenience, along with uh, all the aspects of the of having it here, um, make it better for our students. This is a great opportunity for the school to come into the South Region uh, and be located here at the uh, hospital and known as the South Campus. I mean, we're really excited that the medical school chose to come into Wilkes-Barre and, you know, it, we welcome all people coming into the city of Wilkes-Barre, but when you have the educated medical field coming into your city, young students learning to become medical doctors, it, it's an exciting time for not only Wilkes-Barre, but the greater Wyoming Valley in northeastern Pennsylvania. Now, numerous dignitaries were on hand for today's celebration, including State Senator Lisa Baker. The Wilkes-Barre location joins campuses in Scranton and in Williamsport. Federal Judge A. Richard Caputo combined a series of civil suits filed in the so-called Kids for Cash scandal into one class action suit. Those suits have been sitting in the federal court system for four years. The civil rights claims seek damages from former judges Mark Shivarella and Michael Conahan, who are serving long sentences for racketeering. Also named are PA Child Care LLC, Western PA Child Care LLC, and Mid-Atlantic Youth Services Corporation, which own and operate the centers in Pittston Township and Butler County. And the former co-owner of those companies, Robert J. Powell, a drums attorney who paid the judges $770,000. In the State House, the Republican majority will introduce a state budget bill before the month's end. It will reflect tighter state revenue, but will not include pension changes. Now that according to House Appropriations Chairman Bill Adolph. Governor Tom Corbett has proposed using a projected $175 million in savings from changing future retirement benefits for state government and school district employees to pay for additional basic education spending. Bills have been introduced to do that, but they have not moved. Adolph said he won't base a budget on revenue calculations from legislation that has not passed and does not stand much of a chance of passing. The state pension problem continues to grow. All told, $47 billion is owed on state pensions alone. The budget Bill Adolph will introduce is expected to total around $28.4 billion. In Washington, the IRS scandal continues to grow. This evening, the president accepted the resignation of acting IRS Commissioner Stephen Miller. But the problems have not gone away. INN's Ed Payne has more. A report from the IRS Inspector General reveals that for 18 months, the agency singled out some conservative groups like the Tea Party. It led to lengthy delays processing the group's applications for tax-exempt status. Now the FBI and Justice Department are working to see if any laws were broken and the president is calling for accountability. But some lawmakers say these words don't amount to much. Nobody's held accountable and there's no responsibility. And have you yet to see anybody even get fired in these types of things? The Justice Department is also on the hot seat for collecting two months of phone records from the Associated Press. It did not notify the AP and defends it, saying it did not want to threaten its investigation. An executive editor for the news agency questions this move. We've never seen anything 
along the, the, sky, the size and scope of this particular investigation. It does beg the question, what are they looking for? Why do they need so many phone records? Questions are also resurfacing about the attack on the U.S. diplomatic post in Benghazi, Libya. Republicans believe leaked emails show that administration officials scrubbed the mention of al-Qaeda to cover knowledge of a planned attack. But Democrats say this is just another distraction. President Obama was absolutely right to call this a sideshow. This is about smear politics and nothing else. I'm Ed Payne reporting. Thank you, Ed. In other news tonight, the Klein Township Supervisors voted on Monday night to hire two more part-time police officers. The board voted 2-0 to hire John Gorski of Beaver Meadows and Stephen Demko of Freeland. Supervisor Francis Patton abstained. Both officers have prior experience and were recommended by Chief John Petrilla. One of Northeastern Pennsylvania's premier events will officially kick off tomorrow. Wilkes-Barre's annual fine arts fiesta. Today, vendors and the city were getting ready for it. Mayor Tom Layton was all smiles. Weekend, uh, coming up here in the city of Wilkes-Barre, Thursday is the opening of the Fine Arts Fiesta, and it runs right through Sunday evening. It's a great uh, festival for uh, the city of Wilkes-Barre, for the greater Wyoming Valley, and all of northeastern Pennsylvania. They have some great vendors, they got great entertainment, and I encourage everybody to come up and enjoy the weekend in the city of Wilkes-Barre. And, and if they've never attended the Fine Arts Fiesta, I think they'll be pleasantly surprised at, at how wonderful uh, the entertainment is and how great the vendors are, and I'm sure they'll be walking out of with a package in their hand. The fiesta is very varied with all sorts of different attractions. People come from miles away to be here. We caught up with one vendor all the way from Tennessee. I'm originally from Bradford County, Pennsylvania, and for a number of years after retiring from the Navy, we lived in Drums, Pennsylvania. We started doing the show, and then about 11, 12 years ago, we moved to Unicoi, Tennessee. And we've been coming up every year uh, since we began. Well, the uh, Iron Train Motor Corps has uh, been in existence for a number of years. We do a lot of the parades uh, in the area, um, Labor Day, that type of thing. You'll see us in the parades. Uh, the Harley unit, uh, we also have the uh, uh, Dune Cat, which is a small uh, cars, if you will, a fire truck. Um, and we do a lot of uh, community parades also we're invited to. And one of the uh, functions that we uh, do is uh, here at the Fine Arts Fiesta. Now the Fine Arts Fiesta in Wilkes-Barre will open tomorrow and runs through Sunday. It will close with a live free show from Marshall Crenshaw, who's had several hits of his own and has written hits for other acts as well. A great time at the Wilkes-Barre Fine Arts Fiesta. Well, that's a look at tonight's top stories. Time now to find out if the weather will cooperate for the Fine Arts Fiesta. Meteorologist Joe Garbachik's in the Weather Center with a preview. Joe? Thanks, Lisa. Well, it looks like we'll continue to see improving conditions over the next couple of days. A return to sunshine, a return to some warmer weather. We'll bring out the seven-day forecast in a few. I'm Liz Tolan. I'd like to invite you to the first annual COPS event. It's taking place on September 21st right here at the Butler Township Community Center. This event brought to you by WYLN 35 in Hazleton, the Greater Hazleton Health Alliance and other area sponsors will consist of a 5K run, 5K walk, kids fun run, open air concert, free cookout for the community, crafters, tricky trades, and so much more. Proceeds from this event will go to benefit four area police departments. When you call these men and the men and women they serve with, they're going to be there for you. Won't you take one day out of your busy schedule and be there for them? Heritage SureSave, your neighborhood full-service supermarket. Come see for yourself. They have the freshest selection of meats, cheese, and produce. Baked goods made fresh on premises. They have an in-store butcher who is happy to accommodate your special orders. Be sure to stop in and check out their unadvertised specials. You'll find them throughout the store. See their flyer for weekly specials. Heritage SureSave, your neighborhood full-service supermarket. This week at Heritage, it's time to get grilling with their now famous 25% off all-fresh ground beef sale. Taste the difference. Managing risk is more than just buying an insurance policy. At Dreyfus, our approach is different. We have 25 risk management professionals who have the tools and experience to help our clients avoid and survive unexpected events. We can help you with risk transfer, OSHA requirements, safe workplace, cybersecurity, and claims management. All of these go well beyond an insurance policy. We're also independent, so we can access dozens of insurance carriers like Grange Insurance, who can insure your auto, home, business, and life. Dreyfus Insurance since 1901 and Grange Insurance since 1935. We're committed to helping you manage risk. 
When severe weather hits our area, the WILN Weather Center brings you precise weather information you need to plan your day. And now you can get the latest weather conditions online anytime at WILNTV.com. Utilizing the latest technology, meteorologist Joe Garbacic brings you the most accurate weather information available, including webcams to view current road conditions and detailed maps of our area. For a full detailed and accurate daily weather report, watch WILN Weather with Joe Garbacic weekdays at 5 and 10 and online anytime at WILNTV.com. It is quiet across northeastern Pennsylvania at this 10 o'clock hour. We'll continue to see improving conditions through tonight. Won't be as cold as what we saw the last two nights or so. And heading into tomorrow, looking like it's going to be a spectacular day. Plenty of sunshine, some milder temperatures, and we will be dry as we go into our Thursday. Our lively high tire conditions outside our station in Hazleton, still on the mild side, 63 degrees to be exact. Pressure coming in at 29.72 inches of mercury. We had a little bit of some drops of rain here and there throughout the daytime hours, but nothing measurable in our rain gauge. And there you can see the winds coming in a fairly light, generally under five miles per hour. A Robert Stevens face and body almanac page for the day, 71 and 44. That's uh, uh, close to where we should be for this time of year. We should be averaging 70 for the high, about 45 for the low, not 87. If you look at those numbers, you'd be saying, what's going on there? That was just a test for you to see if you were awake, which you are. All right, 87 and 32, the record high and low, they still stand. 545, 815, sunrise and sunset for tomorrow. Boy, over the past 24 hours across northeastern Pennsylvania, temperature-wise, high temperatures, pretty nice. Generally in the 70s, Mount Pocono only making it up to about 69. But look out toward the west, temperatures managed to get up into the 80s. And how about Pittsburgh coming in with 85 degrees. Temperature-wise right now, 61 in New Angola, 63 in Berwick, as well as Shenandoah, and Monoy City and Bloomsburg, as well as Danville. Satellite and radar, we continue to clear things out throughout the Commonwealth of uh, Pennsylvania, and we're going to continue to see dry conditions, I think, as we head through the daytime hours of tomorrow, looking very nice. Skycast precipitation and clouds keeps things dry through tomorrow and tomorrow night, and as we head into our Friday, it's looking very nice across our area. And again, another nice looking day with a lot of sunshine. A few more clouds around for Saturday, but overall temperature wise looking nice and we're staying on the dry side of things. Notice tomorrow we will be getting up into the 70s, a very nice looking day. Tomorrow night, upper 40s to lower 50s for nighttime lows. And notice the noontime hour on Friday, already temperature should be well into the 60s in many locations. Dry, pleasant, nice for tomorrow showers and storms down toward the south, but we're going to stay on a dry side of things for tomorrow as well as Friday and Saturday. Extended forecast brought to you by the Wire Guys at Division of Arc Electric. 67 for Friday as well as Saturday. Three nice looking days ahead. And then as we go into Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, there will be a couple of showers here and there. Keep the umbrella handy. Some of the time it will not be raining and we'll also see some intervals of sunshine. And then back up into the uh, 70s for Wednesday. It should start to dry out once again. Our evening Pennsylvania lottery numbers, the daily 601, the big four 2709, and a double draw of 3696. Quintal numbers looking like this, 37177, and a cash 5, 715, 20, 26, and 28. Lisa. Thanks, Joe. Coming up, it looked real, but it was only a drill. What organizers hope to achieve by this special event today in Berwick, Gary Perna reports right after this. When it comes to the wire, guys, you are going to have an amazing experience. And if it means giving you back your money, plus, I'm going to do it. We guarantee everything, 112% money back guarantee, labor and material guaranteed for a year, so you don't really need to worry about it. You're gonna walk up to the wall, throw the switch, put your power cords in, the outlets, and everything is the way it's supposed to be. Call me, your time is valuable. If we're late, you get paid. 
The friendly people at Pantry Quick at the corner of Diamond Avenue and Cybert Streets in Hazleton for decades has been your first stop for lottery tickets, munchies, and soda. Now Pantry Quick is your first stop for six packs of your favorite beer. All the domestic name brands such as Budweiser, Coors Light, and Miller Light, Landshark, and Yangling. Pantry Quick also carries a large variety of imports and craft beers. Stop in today to Pantry Quick, now carrying all your favorite beers at the corner of Diamond Avenue and Cybert Streets in Hazleton. Hello, I'm Tiffany Cloud. One of the big problems plaguing northeastern Pennsylvania is meth labs, but the vigilance of the community can help spot and prevent them, and even bust them. Berwick's chief of police and its narcotics officer join me this week on The Storm, and we'll all learn ways to help fight crime, this week only on WYLN. Welcome to Robert Stevens Face and Body, Hazleton's complete skin care center. Here, our licensed specialists will consult with you to discuss your skin care needs, rejuvenate you with our special facial treatments, and apply gentle, relaxing massages to melt your tension away using all state-of-the-art technical treatments and superior skin products. So call today and let the transformation begin at Robert Stevens Face and Body, 788-7546. Join us this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. We'll be joined by Libby Sinto, who is going to tell our viewers why, if you're in pain, don't let a language barrier stop you from getting help and being the best that you can be. Her courageous story coming up this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. Join us. Welcome back. A mock drill took place today at the Berwick Area High School just a few days before the prom. Our Gary Perna was there. Now we must remind you that this was only a drill and no one was injured in it. Berwick Fire Department, Mickey 91. This is a drill. This is a drill. Motor vehicle accident with entrapment. Berwick, Berwick High School, Berwick Borough. Police officers, paramedics, and firefighters took part in a live drill this afternoon at the Berwick Area High School. Prom night presents a much higher risk than normal of being in a car accident due to teenagers driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol and teenagers who are driving distracted. The bottom line is that prom night accidents could be avoided if teenagers make better choices. Take for instance this accident scene. Casey and Todd who went to the prom and enjoyed a wonderful night. Deja, Kaylee, Erica, and Troy chose to go to a party and drink instead of going to prom. Leaving the prom, Casey and Todd could not stop in time when Troy ran a stop sign in his drunken state. The bystanders who witnessed the accident called 911. Members of the SAD Club played the parts of the victims and the actors in the crash. Heather Henry is a SAD Club advisor. I think it's important to have this drill before prom to remind students that prom is not all about the glitz and the glamour and the fun, it's also about remaining safe. And the choices they make determine whether or not they stay safe or not. The students that were watching the mock drill saw their fellow students being arrested or rushed to the hospital or dead. Um, it was a little scary being there being dead and hearing like everything go on around you. Um, it was interesting. Troy Stair played a part of a drunk driver that was arrested at the scene of the crash. 
Uh, it was kind of interesting. I mean, we got out and I had to do a breathalyzer test. He didn't give me a field sobriety test or anything like that. And then he put me in handcuffs, and I learned that handcuffs are actually really tight and they actually do hurt, not like fake handcuffs. So that was interesting. You were arrested as well. I was. Not an experience I'd like to ever relive, that's for sure. I mean, it's a scary thought that that actually does happen. Like, it was always some kind of thing that we all knew could happen, but seeing it like this, even though it's fake, I still feel bad. Like, those were my friends and stuff. Dave Dietrich is the rescue chief of the Berwick Fire Department. He told us what the firefighters' main purpose was at today's drill. Uh, today our role was basically what we do on an everyday basis. Uh, we protect the patient from any further injury and remove the metal from around the car so we can get the patient out safely with less spinal injury. And the accident that occurred today here at the Berwick Area High School may have only been a drill. But fire police and EMS officials that took part in it hope that the students take home one important message, not to drink and drive or text and drive any time they're on the roadway. In Berwick, for WILN's Late Edition, I'm Gary Perna. Wow, thanks, Gary. Definitely a life-saving lesson. When we come back, Beth is in with the first half of sports, so don't go anywhere. I'm Kathy Dobash. I'm running for Luzerne County Council. I will not vote to raise taxes. I will demand the county manager lives within a budget. I will insist that our government employees share the cost of their health care. And I promise to work to improve transparency in county government by ensuring that members of council follow the Sunshine Law. Vote Kathy Dobash, Luzerne County Council. Together, let's make our county better. During these changing times, is your insurance program up to date? I'm local Allstate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. Our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? Tom, you can't be serious. Hey, good morning, neighbor. Just thought I'd pay some bills and download some tunes. You've got DSL at your house. Go do that there. Yeah, but your cable high-speed internet is so much faster. Lucky me. Oh, by the way, your mom emailed you. Man, are you in trouble. <laughs> Service Electric High-Speed Internet. The best internet in the neighborhood. Join us this week on Women's Day. It's all about senior care. We'll be joined by Dr. Philip Benio of the Alliance Medical Group. He's going to talk to you about medication management for seniors. Later, Lisa Marie Halecki from Heritage Hill is going to tell you about her beautiful facility and some things you might want to think about when looking for a new home for your loved ones. We'll get creative with Chris. We'll give you a beautiful floral arrangement from Stephanie's Greens and Things. Another great giveaway this week. And we'll tell you who's been caught doing good. It's all coming up this week on Women Today. Join us. Well, it's been a rough start for the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins in this second round as they try to get their hands on the Calder Cup. They trail the Providence Bruins 2-0 in the series, losing Game 1 8-5, Game 2 a 5-2 loss. But tonight they are back at home, and hopefully the hometown crowd helps to get some wind in their sails. And there were some new Penguins fans in the crowd who hoped to see them get their first win in the series. Both teams were leaders in the AHL in defense, and it showed the first period was scoreless, but moving to the second. Providence will get a goal here from on the board first from left wing Jared Knight. He scores on the assist from Kyle McKinnon and David Warsawski. And then at the 10 minute 42 second mark, the Penguins strike back on their home ice. Chad Kalarik and Cody Wild passing to an open Trevor Smith, and it's a big goal, keeping the Baby Pens in the matchup tonight. It's all tied at ones. Once again, defense huge tonight. No goals in the third, forcing overtime. But the Bruins' Carter Camper will score. Providence will go on to lead the series by three games with the 2-1 overtime win. Now the Penguins will be back on the home ice 
on Friday night, hoping to stay in that series. Three other games tonight in the hunt for the Calder Cup in the Eastern Conference. It was Springfield against Syracuse. Syracuse, the Crunch get the shutout 3-zip. And in the Western Conference, Grand Rapids win 5-4 over Toronto, and it's tied at threes right now in the third period between Texas and Oklahoma City. And today was the kickoff at PNC Field in Music for the NCAA Division III Mid-Atlantic Regional Baseball Tournament. It's the first time in a few years Northeastern Pennsylvania is the location of the tournament as it used to be held at First Energy Stadium in Lakewood, New Jersey. The Mid-Atlantic Regionals are an 18 double elimination tournament that Misericordia University is hosting. We stopped by the stadium where the AAA Rail Riders play when Misericordia was on the field against Ramapo College of New Jersey. Some games were pushed back this afternoon due to a rain delay. Now we're going to go to the second inning. It's Chris Wurr up to bat for Ramapo facing Evan Robuch Robuchevsky on the mound for the Cougars. Wurr will get the hit and advance to second on that throwing error. Then it will be Zach Carroll. He'll triple and get the RBI for the Roadrunners. Ramapo will go up 1-0. Then for Misericordia in the second inning, Juli Julian Ferraria also will advance to the second on the throwing error by Ramapo, but Misericordia will not get that run. He will be stranded there on second. And Ramapo will take the game and shut out the Cougars for nothing tonight. There are a few other teams playing in NEPA, including Alvernia, Keystone College, Johns Hopkins, Penn State, Harrisburg, Keene, and Franklin and Marshall. The winner will advance to the Division III College World Series in Appleton, Wisconsin. Those dates, May 24th to the 28th. Former Penn State quarterback Matt McGloin is officially, officially an NFL quarterback. Find out where in the second half of sports coming up in a bit. But first, Lisa's back on the desk next. For a dealer that will take the time to get to know our needs. And hook me up with something that has some all-wheel drive and some power. Bam! And what will you be using the car for primarily? Cycling, snowboarding, you know. Gardening, antiquing, and commuting to work. I've got just the car. And we've got just the dealer. The right car. The right price. The right dealer. Fairway Subaru. Yeah. Join us this week on Wellness Through Physical Therapy. Ting is going to explain to us what carpal tunnel syndrome is, and surprisingly, you may not need surgery to cure it. The solutions, they're coming up this week on Wellness Through Physical Therapy. Join us. Students in the Crestwood Area High School... Recapping tonight's top story, a senior at Crestwood Area High School has been charged with making threats towards the school. Ann Gownley reports. Students in the Crestwood Area High School reported three separate incidences where threats were seen written on the walls in the boys' bathroom. April 18th, bomb in the school. May 8th, bomb in school. May 9th, ricin is in the school. Each time it was found, the school was evacuated and searched by multiple agencies. Bomb-sniffing dogs were brought in fire departments, ambulances, and members of the Luzerne County Emergency Management Agency. There was no evidence of bombs or ricin during any of those searches. With the help of the district, police were able to identify the student who committed these acts as 18-year-old Richard Sewell of Mountaintop, a senior at Crestwood Area High School. Investigators used writing samples to find similarities between Sewell's handwriting and the writing in the bathroom. The um, school resource officer was a major uh, help in this investigation. Having that, that officer in the school uh, provided us uh, much um, needed help. And it also, um, we were fortunate to also have a lot of assistance from the students, from the faculty. We are in the school. We, when we get a complaint, we investigate it very thoroughly. And today we, this is a... Uh, a step in the right direction. This is what happens. Mm -hmm. 
Sewell was arraigned this morning at District Magistrate Ronald Swanks in Mountaintop. It's all just bullshit by the school. They're just trying to get me to You didn't do what they said to do? No, of course not. Did you have anything on the back of the bathroom stalls saying it was a bomb in school? No, it's not my, it's not my kind of thing. Sewell is charged with one count each of threatening to set weapons of mass destruction, criminal mischief, terroristic threats, causing false alarms to agencies of public safety, false reports, intimidation of witnesses or victims, and one count of institutional vandalism. These are serious matters. What we've um, gone through, our nation has gone through, um, threats like this will be taken seriously and um, we will dedicate all of our resources in trying to solve um, the matter, the case, and to see some type of resolution. Our main concern is the safety of our communities and that's, as you all heard, that was our legitimate concern in the arraignment today and um, we will proceed with caution and we will uh, make sure that our communities are safe and law enforcement does everything to continue to keep our, our streets and our neighborhoods safe. Chief Angler stresses the seriousness of a crime like this and what it could mean if you commit these acts. Think twice. It, this, is, this could be you here. If you, if you do this kind of type of thing, law enforcement will find you. Uh, the, the school districts will not tolerate this, this behavior. Sewell was released after posting a $25,000 straight cash bail and is not allowed on school grounds or contact with any of the students who were involved in this case. In Mountaintop for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Ann Gownley. And that's a look at tonight's top story. When we come back, a new tradition for the Hazleton Police Department. And Beth is back with the latest on Matt McGloin. And I've got some great weather to talk about in the seven-day forecast. How great, you might ask? Stick around. I'll give you the answers. In four. base luncheonette still making memories after all these years your family's good health begins with a great team that team is the alliance medical group we're the first health care provider in the greater hazelton area to offer a fully integrated approach to family and specialized medical care our expanding network of more than 30 physicians and specialists are trusted by thousands for routine and complex medical treatments for a convenient appointment at any of our 15 regional offices simply call 501 4 amg alliance medical group your health that's our specialty if you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. WYLN CA 35's children's programming is designed with the specific purpose of serving the educational and informational needs of children. In compliance with FCC guidelines, a copy of the children's programming report is on file for public inspection at WYLN, 1057 East 10th Street, Hazleton, PA, during normal business hours, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. Welcome back. It was a special ceremony to remember past and present members of the Hazleton Police Department. Our Ann Galney was there. It was on this day in 1938 when the Hazleton Police Department lost one of their own. Senior ranking patrolman Ernesto Valente, an officer that dedicated 17 years of his life protecting and serving the citizens of Hazleton. He enlisted on April 21st in 1921. 
Now 75 years later, on National Peace Officers Day, during National Police Week, the Hazleton Police Department is beginning a tradition that will hopefully last for many years to come. As declared by Mayor Joe Yanuzzi, May 15th in the city of Hazleton will now be Police Officer Memorial Day. Police Chief Frank D'Andrea says it was in 1969 when his grandfather told him the story of Officer Valent, and today he shared his story to the public. On May 15th, 1938, an eight-year-old boy was struck by a car on Broad Street. As the driver rushed the boy to the hospital, Officer Valent stopped the vehicle. When the officer learned of the emergency, that officer risked life and limb, holding on to the pillar, riding on the running board, blowing his whistle frantically to move everybody out of the way. As the car sped towards the hospital, with the patrolman clearing the way, a wagon pulled out onto the street. The driver of the car slammed on his brakes. The police officer was thrown from the vehicle, striking his head and dying from his injuries. The boy survived. DeAndrea said he was surprised that no one on the force knew of Valent and added that he was one generation away from being forgotten. There were no photos, no plaques, and no memorials to remember him by. With the help of Valent's family, DeAndrea created a special plaque that was unveiled today to the family. Officer Valent's niece, Teresa Valent, was in high school when her uncle died. She said it was the talk of the town and many were upset by the news. She was happy to be a part of today's ceremony. I think it was a wonderful gesture on the chief of police to organize this and pay tribute, which was done much later than it should have been done, but we certainly are thankful that they did it. We also spoke with his great nephew, Tony Colombo. It was a great idea. I mean, I wasn't, I was only two months old when the accident happened, so I really did not know Neste. But he was my grandfather's brother, which my grandfather lived to be in his 90s, so I was well acquainted with my grandfather, and he used to tell us stories about Uncle Neste. Officer Ernesto Valenz plaque will be hung up right here, right outside the doors that Hazleton police officers use every day. And Chief DeAndrea hopes that when they see this plaque, they'll understand the sacrifice he made to save the eight-year-old boy. The picture on this plaque is actually from a group photo of the Hazleton Police Department when they stood on these very steps in 1925. Patrolman Valen, with this plaque, you shall not be forgotten. Officers from Hazleton and surrounding communities took part in today's ceremony, laying a wreath in front of the Veterans Memorial and giving a 21-gun salute. Mayor Yanuzzi, along with State Senator John Udichak, also presented the Valent family with proclamations. DeAndrea says this ceremony will hopefully be a tradition for years to come in Hazleton to pay tribute to law enforcement past, present, and future who have served and continue to serve protecting their community. In Hazleton for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Ann Gownley. Thank you, Ann. A very nice tradition started in Hazleton. When we come back, Beth is in with the second round of sports. Joe will recap your forecast on Late Edition. All Care Home Care. The health care that you need in the comfort and privacy of your own home. At All Care Home Care, our caring and compassionate staff of skilled nurses, occupational speech, physical therapists, dietitian, social worker, and home health aides will give you the professional care you need. Call 459-3002. With All Care Home Care, you will feel so much better and be able to do so much more. Remember, it's still your choice. For your care, call us and we'll be there. Bottleneck Saloon and Eatery, now open on the square in Wilkes-Barre. Stop by to see us for lunch to break up and brighten up your day. Or get it to go. Our lunch menu ranges from light to all right. With signature salads, saloon-style sandwiches, crunchy rings, Nipa's best wings, and draft drinks to power you through the afternoon. After work, we're there to help you unwind with friends. Put little bottlenecks in your day. Bottleneck Saloon and Eatery, now on the square. See you there. Interesting. 
things, you just need to know where to look. Come with us off the beaten path. The Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home Incorporated at 542 North Wyoming Street in Hazleton, serving the greater Hazleton area since 1890 and still family owned and operated, offers convenient parking, handicapped accessibility, seating for over 150 people, casket cremation product showrooms to accommodate traditional cremation and pre-planned funerals. The Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home Incorporated, 570-454-3341. What in the... Tom, it is 2 a.m. You know, I just love this on-demand thing. Tons of extra choices, pause, rewind. You are always here watching my on-demand. Why don't you just get rid of your dish and get digital cable yourself? You know, I'd love to. But I still have seven months left on my contract. Service electric digital cable with on-demand. The best TV in the neighborhood. Go Hog Wild for Iron Pigs Baseball. WILN is televising the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs Live, America's favorite pastime on your local network, WILN TV 35. See the Major League Stars of Tomorrow at Coca-Cola Park. Don't miss any of the games here on WILN TV 35. Visit WILNTV.com for a complete Iron Pig schedule. Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs on WILN, your home for live sports. Official Matt McGloin is an NFL quarterback. The former Penn State play caller signed a three-year contract earlier this evening with the Oakland Raiders. Before trying out for the Raiders, the undrafted free agent went to the Washington Redskins and the Carolina Panthers mini camps. McGloin will be out in Oakland on Monday when the team begins their organized team activities. Other QBs on the roster include Matt Flynn, former Ohio State quarterback Terrell Pryor, and fellow rookies Tyler Wilson and Kyle Padron. The Phillies announced earlier today that they've signed Carlos Sembrano. It's a minor league deal and he will start extended spring training immediately. But the Phillies obviously have him in mind to take injured Roy Halladay's spot in the rotation. Sembrano, who turns 32 on June 1st, has had good numbers and led the National League in wins once. Career, he's 132-91 and with a 3.66 ERA. On the downside, he hasn't had a season-long ERA under four since 2010 and he's got bit of a temper. He'd become better known for his explosions than his pitching, but he's also a very good hitting pitcher with a lifetime average of 238 and 24 career home runs. Zach Greinke came off the disabled list tonight to face the Nationals. It's just four and a half weeks after fracturing his left collarbone in a fight with San Diego Padres outfielder Carlos Quinton, and it's more than three weeks ahead of the original timetable. Both Greinke and the Dodgers say he's not being rushed back because the highly touted and highly payrolled Dodgers are in last place in the National League West. The Dodgers considered giving Greinke one more rehab start at Class A, but after a debate among those involved, they opted against it. Under the NHL's expanded schedule of outdoor games, Yankee Stadium will be hosting two next January. The Devils will take on the Rangers January 26th, and the Islanders will play the Rangers January 29th. The NHL has considered the annual Winter Classic outdoor game such a big hit, it expanded the idea to include six outdoor games next year. And the Ravens say 23-year-old linebacker Rolando McLean is retiring from the NFL. McLean signed with the Ravens as a free agent on April 12th. Ten days later, he was arrested in Alabama and charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. McLean spent his first three seasons with Oakland. In 41 games with the Raiders, he had 274 tackles, six and a half sacks, and one, in and one interception. In his final season, he was suspended for two games for conduct, detrimental to the team. So maybe we'll see if Matt McGloin can help the Raiders out there. Let's check out our national scoreboard tonight. First up, the Miami, the Miami Heat. Lead the series against the Bulls 3-1, and the Heat will head to the Eastern Conference Finals with their 94-91 win tonight. Grizzlies also up 3-1 on the Thunder. They have the one-point lead. In the second quarter, the Blackhawks host the Red Wings in their best-of-series opener on the ice tonight. Chicago takes Game 1. 3-1. Some baseball scores in in Game 1 of a doubleheader in the Eastern League. Fight and Phils fell to Erie 3-1. Game 2, Redding takes it 7-6. And Richmond edge the Senators and Akron fell to Binghamton. In the International League, Russ Kanthler with a great night tonight. Three for five with two RBIs in Norfolk's 10-1 to romp over the Iron Pigs and the Rail Riders lost a close one in their high-scoring game with the Mudhens, 12-1. 
to 11. In the majors, the Orioles fell to the Padres. Houston wins over Detroit. Walk White Sox over the Twins. Texas over Oakland. The Rays trail the Red Sox 9-2. And the Mariners, they roll the Yanks 12-2. Blue Jays win, and the Angels trail the Royals by one in the third. In the National League, Phillies fell to the Ingl- Indians early today. The Pirates win at home 3-1. The Reds, they get the shutout tonight. And the Mets and the Cards are all tied up at 2. And lastly tonight, the Nationals. They are trailing the Los Angeles Dodgers 2-0 in the third inning. Joe's coming right back with the rest of your forecast. People have a very jaded opinion of contractors. At The Wire Guys, we completely turn that experience on its head. My electrician is going to show up and wear shoe covers. Be respectful. We are the cleanest contractors that you'll ever use. Before he even starts, he's going to give you a price in writing that he's going to stick to. I want them to be your superhero when they walk out that door. Call me. If we're late, you get paid. Hi, I'm Liz Tolan. I'd like to invite you to the first annual COPS event. It's taking place on September 21st, right here at the Butler Township Community Center. This event brought to you by WYLN 35 in Hazleton, the Greater Hazleton Health Alliance, and other areas. Will consist of a 5K run, 5K walk, kids fun run, open air concert, free cookout for the community, crafters, tricky trades, and so much more. Proceeds from this event will go to benefit four area police departments. When you call these men and the men and women they serve with, they're gonna be there for you. Won't you take one day out of your busy schedule and be there for them? Enjoy the great outdoors at the Whitetail Preserve Shooting Ranges Trap, Skeet, and Sporting Place course. No waiting and no lines. First time shooting? Whitetail Preserve employs certified instructors to help you get the most out of your experience. Hungry? The restaurant at Whitetail has a great menu to satisfy and offers catering for all occasions. Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, approximately 13 miles west of Hazleton and just one hour from Allentown, Reading, and the Delaware Water Gap. 118 Boulevard Road, just off the Rockland Road, near Rockland, 384-2314. The WILN Weather Center brings you precise weather information you need to plan your day. And now you can get the latest weather conditions online anytime at WILNTV.com. Utilizing the latest technology, meteorologist Joe Garbacic brings you the most accurate weather information available, including webcams to view current road conditions and detailed maps of our area. For a full detailed and accurate daily weather report, watch WILN Weather with Joe Garbacic weekdays at 5 and 10 and online anytime at WILNTV.com. It is tropical season officially, but not in the Atlantic just yet. That gets underway June 1st. Both seasons end no, actually, both seasons end November 30th, but the Eastern Pacific hurricane season officially began today. Here's a look at some of the names for the Eastern North Pacific this year. And Alvin is already brewing out there in the Eastern North Pacific. Alvin actually is a tropical storm, so the first Name storm of the year is already occurring today, and ironically, it is the first day of hurricane season out there in the eastern North Pacific. And you can look at some of the other names on the list, and as we get closer to the Atlantic hurricane season, I'll give you those names that will be on the board for 2013. Live 35 Skycast Doppler, still a little bit of some rain here and there, especially over the southern part of Pennsylvania, but the rest of us, I think we're going to be in pretty good shape through the overnight hour. 63 degrees are lively high tire conditions. Outside our station in Hazleton, pressure coming in at 29.72 inches of mercury. 68, Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport. 63 in Mount Pocono. 61 in Williamsport. 62 in Seals Grove. And look at southwestern Pennsylvania. Temperatures in the 70s. In fact, right now it's 75 degrees. In Pittsburgh, up in the Wyoming Valley area, from Nanticoke through Wilkesbury, Kingston, and Lehman, your temperatures holding in the 60s to near 70 degrees. So we continue to see the clearing out trend. That will be the case through tonight and tomorrow. We're going to see lots of sunshine, mostly sunny skies, a few clouds here and there. But other than that, things looking very nice, temperature-wise looking very nice the next couple of days. And we're going to continue to stay dry through tomorrow as we head into our Friday and as we head into our Saturday. Dry, pleasant comfortable conditions for tomorrow. Extended forecast brought to you by the Wire Guys, a division of Arc Electric. Next chance of seeing any rain won't get here, possibly until Sunday and Monday and Tuesday.
may have to deal with a couple of showers here and there scattered in nature keep the umbrella handy but much of the time we'll have sunshine mixed with some clouds and temperature wise not too bad all right tomorrow looks like it's going to be a pretty stellar it day it will very good very good today was nice a little today breezy was very but nice. today plenty was a of very sunshine nice day. yeah so absolutely how about matt mcgloin him. Yeah, pretty and cool. He's excited. So yeah. we'll see how that works out with Terrell Pryor there and uh, him, Ohio State, Penn State. Mm, you never know. It'll be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> he's a very good chance. So have a great night, everybody. Thank you for joining us. The team will see you back here tomorrow night live at 10. Good night.